Hey everyone, Mike on Monday coming to you. So last week was the week where we have a lot of training that goes on at uh, the Ag Lion Conference, WABA, etc. Anyhow, it's an opportunity for a lot of us to go get some additional uh, training and educational credits and such. So what I wanted to bring forward today was uh, something on white mold and diseases in soybeans. Um, so over here, at least in the eastern part of Wisconsin, white mold is a pretty intense uh, disease at times. I know as you move west, it changes a little bit just because of the different uh, climate and environment that you're in. But um, what I wanted to bring out there was what did we learn on white mold this past week as far as uh, some of the research going. So to, to back up, give you a little head uh, things on white mold. You know, when we when we grow that fungus out in the field, the the sclerotia, that's basically where the fruiting bodies will come from, the next generation of that. Uh, those rabbit, uh, excuse me, rat turds that fall out of the combine, leave on, on the soil there. Uh, they last seven to eight years, depending if we no-till or mix them into the soil, that makes a difference. Uh, we know that as the canopy closes up and there's moisture trapped into the canopy that that creates a very good environment for those fruiting bodies to uh, germinate and put their spores out and infect our soybeans. So things that we can do uh, to manage this disease uh, from a cultural practice, it's like, well, how far, how long of a rotation can I create in that field that has a higher population of this disease is to your advantage. Uh, it, all these things are not foolproof is what I'm saying, but series of things can help improve. Uh, again, remember that white mold can impact 400 different species of plants out there. So it's hard to uh, you use just a rotation as an example, because maybe you've got some Canadian thistle or some velvet leaf or pigweed and that includes the water hemp out there are all species that are uh, susceptible to white mold. So from a rotation standpoint, that gets maybe a little more tricky. Um, we know that wider rows allows more air into the, the canopy that helps dries it. We know lower populations uh, allow more air to get into there to dry that canopy as well. Uh, unfortunately, those two things sometimes will take us away from how do we create higher yield? Because still the data still leans towards uh, narrower rows with higher populations, etc. tend to give us a little more yield. But when we're trying to manage white mold, we need to step out of our comfort zone maybe and start looking at these other cultural practices that we can do, such as wider rows, lower populations. Uh, when, you, when you have a field that you're, you know that you're gonna struggle with, you know, Call us here at Country Visions and we'll point you in the direction of which soybean variety has the greatest tendency to take on that environment. I, I struggle to say resistance because really resistance doesn't exist in white mold in genetics as of today. And different ratings from all the different seed companies only tell you a small portion of it. It's basically how does it rate within the genetics that that company is bringing to you. The advantage that Country Visions has is that we have multiple uh, companies that we're working with and the genetics we get to look at, uh, at over and over again from various plots, lots of different eyes. So we have the ability to tell you which ones tend to be stronger in that environment. Then on top of it, you can look at adding a seed treatment such as Heads Up, which is known to help us with that. And uh, the other piece that I look at is also the possible use of a fungicide later in the season. Again, we want to be using products that at least have some ability to help us with it. There are a couple on the market that uh, are, are give you a great label on white mold, but we do invest quite quite heavily in those uh, materials, meaning there are a lot of dollars per acre with those specific materials. 
Uh, but the other piece I wanted to put into this equation on the white mold are the other diseases that uh, were talked about that are moving north. Uh, things like uh, frog eye and brown spot and uh, there's an, others that, as well that are traditionally southern diseases that we're seeing this migration coming north and with that there's also been uh, observations, well, it's beyond observations now, it's been documented that uh, there's resistance coming with these diseases. That, as an example, uh, the, the QOI family of fungicides, the strobes, frog eye, uh, as you go south, has become resistant to that specific class of fungicide. So the when it comes to the use of fungicides, uh, I've been a strong believer of the idea of if we can use multiple modes of action, just like we talk about in the the, the weed control side of it uh, on on water hemp, consider doing that with the, the fungicide materials and that you have plenty of strength in the triazol, the SDHI materials, and maybe a little less uh, leading on the that strobe side of it. Because these, these things are coming north, they're gonna impact us somewhere down the road. Uh, the beauty of being north is you can see a lot of things coming at you and you can create management strategies well in advance of it coming into our area. With that, I know I gave you a whole load of stuff here Pick up the phone, call your agronomist at Country Visions. We'll help you through these ideas and, and work for that profitable center that, that we're all shooting for. With that, have a great week. See you next time.